This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another dueling book dual commentary uh lost rock paper scissors which is kind of irritating uh, unless he just chooses to make me go first because this is a single so people play weird shit which brings me to my point i'm playing a deck that i hate but i always have a Yu-Gi-Oh profile of and i always am just like i wonder if this deck's as bad as i remember it being uh and that is teller knight demise i literally cannot stand this deck uh because it's so busterish and when it opens bad oh my god it opens bad um like jesus man jesus mans oh my god like, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at this nonsense. Um, I need to draw one of my engine cards, uh, which could be Duality, Card of Demise, Deneb, or Rota, but I have got none of those, which means I have to uh, resign myself to whatever could happen there. But, so he is playing Invoked. Okay. Uh, so the question is, does he have Spellbook of Knowledge? Does he have Wonder Wand? And is he going to follow that up with an Ice Bell? Because that's going to be what really gets my gander. Even though I kind of have ways to out it, because I've got Warning, which I can use next turn on his Invoker. Uh, he does have the Spellbook of Knowledge. Okay, well, this is going to become... Oh, he's not even using it on the Alistair. That seems like it's not correct. I would have definitely used the Secrets, and then gotten another Knowledge out of my deck to deck then, and then used the Alistair. Because then that could open you up to so many possibilities, so many activities. Uh, but so, we'll go into main phase one here. No need to waste the dark hole. Uh, I'm going to normal summon this. And I'm going to attempt to use effect. And if that's if this resolves, then I'll be able to add Altair. And I'll be able to start my uh, my basic just little dir to dir thing going on. And I'll be able to set five and pass my turn. And just put the fear of God into this man. At least that's the hope and that's the theory. Uh, but so I will now chain. Well, that does, that's not how that works, but okay. Uh, chain, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. I'm going to get rewarded for not using this damn, uh, this damn dark hole. Uh, uh, okay. So this masterpiece is on the board. And the I guess he's going to pop my thing with True King's Return. I'm assuming. Uh, is that mandatory, by the way? Uh, is its effect mandatory? Uh, it's you can. Okay, it's returns effect. Okay, so he's going to send this to grave, which actually works better for me, because that means back to the front gets to use that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just dark hole this masterpiece. Seems like uh, seems like a solid idea. This masterpiece has no material like in the graveyard loaded for it either, so like, not even like necessarily worried about it, but at the same time, this works out better for me in the long run. Uh, because I get to go Dimensional Barrier, calling Fusion on his Invocation. I get to Warning, whatever his summon is. I get to back to the front of the Deneb and search for, uh, for Vega. <laughs> this works out in my favor so much! True Draco Invoked. Interesting. I mean, I know that's an OCG deck, but, uh, seems like he either isn't playing it correctly. Because that, that, that Spellbook of Knowledge thing was kind of weird, but then it makes sense with the True King's Return. But at the same time, I still think there's probably some other things that should happen. Um, uh, yes. Yes, in fact. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not in the business of letting this happen. Because its effect is only once per turn anyway. Um, so, like, you can only use each effect. Uh, let's see. Fusion? <laughs> uh, like, this is so easy! He's down to two cards, and I'm gonna use back to the front on the Neb. Uh, I feel like I'm bullying this person. Nope. That is not a cost. <laughs> you trying to get one over on me? That's not how this works. The invocation does not do shit, it goes to grave. You are correct. Yeah, you trying to cheat. I see you. I see you trying to do your thing. Uh, new to this deck, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let's we'll see how that works. Um, but so that invocation goes to grave. I've got a fiendish chain and I've got a back to the front. 
Um, EP. Back to the front. Whoa. I think Oasis of Dragon Soul still might be better than this card, but this card's chainable to things, which makes it a little bit better as well. Uh, the Neb F. So I'll use the Neb here to search for Zavega. And then I'll be able to go Vega into... Uh, actually, I don't even think I need to do anything with Vega. I could just uh, go into the stuff that I want to do normally. I think I will still add Vega, though. Just because it makes a little bit of sense. If I draw another card, like another Deneb, that would be like amazing. That's a Raigeki, though. Uh, but so Fiendish Chain can be used on his next Alistair if he gets access to it. Arguably, I should have let him use his Wind Witch Ice Bell, Summon Glass Bell, do all that, go into his Synchros. But at the same time, I just like to deny people quickly. Uh, I don't like to give them false hope and false uh, false senses of security. So there is that. So at this point, that back to the front would have been better as an Oasis. I'm playing Call in this list, so it's not really a real comparison that needs to be made. But what I can do is I can go into Tsukiyomi, I guess, and just try and draw more cards. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that, though. But I could go uh, into Tsukiyomi, and I could do Vega into Altair, and I can go into Tsukiyomi with those two, have the Fiendish Chain backing me up, discard the Raigeki. Yeah, that seems that seems pretty alright. It starts to dig me for more cards, and he has to out my Tsukiyomi before anything else happens. And it puts my Deneb kind of safely under it. Um, so, Vega F to summon the Altair from hand. I need to play like a Decode Talker in this. There's no target in my grave for, uh, for the Altair, uh, which is a little upsetting, but at the same time, it'll, we'll, we'll manage. So I can overlay these. Uh, I'm not gonna overlay them right now though. That makes no sense. I can just do more damage this way. Um, so I'll just attack with these and then I'll make Tsukiyomi in defense. Uh, makes better sense. But I'll just try to dig for cards, essentially. Um, so we'll attack with these. I'm still going to overlay the Vega and the Deneb specifically. Because what that will allow me to do is, like, I could make uh, I could make the Dark Teller Knight motherfucker if I wanted to. But... <laughs> um, I mean, it really does, though. It has very few thought processes other than just how am I going to get my shit and how am I going to get yours. Uh, but, so, like, it's, it's just a deck that I don't enjoy playing. <laughs> um, but, so, uh, if, and I will discard my Raigeki, and I will draw two cards. That is a Solemn Strike, and that is an MST. Both great against this deck. Holy shit. Um, so I'll do this, because the MST could be good for his Diagram, his Magical Meltdown, all of these other cards that could be very good. Um, okay, so he's doing this here now. Um, uh, think. I'm just going to keep saying think. Um, so, let's see. I could let him just go into a few different things, or I could just not. Um, I could just fiendish chain this. Uh, um... Uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna let him synchro up. I'm gonna let him get the cards out of his deck, and then I'm gonna let him synchro up. And I'm just gonna solemn strike the first synchro he makes, leaving his little snowbell out, and then should be good for me from there. It's just gonna get the cards out of his extra deck that he's trying to use. Uh, essentially, is what I'm trying to do. So glass bell, yeah. And then he gets to search for his Snowbell, and then he gets to make a level 7 Synchro. Um, none. No responses. Um, no responses at all. Is he even going to burn me for the 500? It looks like he's not uh, going to. I mean, if he decides to say that he's going to burn me for the 5, then I'll let him do it. Uh, but otherwise, but now he's locked under the Ice Bell. So the only invocation fusion he'd be able to make would be a uh, <laughs> would be the um, the dumbass uh, Raijin. Uh, so let's see, is what what are you making first? Are you making clear wing? Are you gonna make crystal wing and attack my dude? Are you making clear wing and you're gonna attack with that? Oh, you're making this winter bell. Um, okay, so 
He's synchroing up. He's not even using the burn effect. Not even fucking with it. Um, so he's going to summon his crystal wing. And I'm going to solemn strike it. And then everything's going to be good. Because <laughs> now, uh, even if he summons Alistair, I'm okay with that. Because the only thing he can make is uh, Raijin. Because he's under Ice Bell. If he... <laughs> okay. Alright, well then. Well, that just kind of that just kind of puts it more into perspective, like just the reason why I don't like this deck and why I also don't like Invoked. I don't like Invoked because of the fact that it seems really linear in terms of what it allows. Uh, but I mean, it's not something I consider a bad deck by any stretch. I don't like Ice Spell as a card because it's also very limiting, but it's a very much a card that works well with the theme in the deck. But man. <laughs> I just told him no over and over again. And that's what my deck is designed to do. So there is that. But like I said, I hate playing this deck. But it's always a deck that's in my uh, that's in my Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro folder. And it's always legal. It's literally always legal. So there's no reason for me to not play it for random videos. Because it is a viable deck at literally like any point in the metagame. Because of the fact that it is Tellers, Traver is a fucked up card, and Traps are kind of good. So there's that. There's all these different things that go into that. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Links, as always, are in the description of my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Something I've also done recently to change my Patreon is that if you want to enter into a monthly giveaway contest for 10 packs of the most recent set, then everyone that is a part of my Patreon supporters list, essentially, is auto-entered into that. If you want to go check out the reward tiers and see what's up in terms of, uh, in terms of how that works, then definitely go go check that out. Also, if you want to be part of my own personal Discord with me and a bunch of other people, the entry into that is literally only the $2 reward tier. So it's very economical, but it's also just there to make the people that want to be there the ones that are there above all else. That's the only reason why there's any sort of uh, strings attached to it. But there's that, so definitely consider that if you're interested. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video.